Hello, today is the second day of Tammuz, the 8th of July. We're up to the second reading of Parshat Chukat. And in this uh, reading, it starts off with uh, finishing off the laws of the red heifer and how it purifies. And then we get this... uh, sudden jump that we mentioned already of 38 years so between the end of chapter 19 numbers 19 22 and the beginning of chapter 20 verse verse 1 38 years have passed by and in these 38 years as we mentioned yesterday the entire generation that came out of Egypt has passed on and now the their children, everybody was under the age of 20. The entire congregation of the Israelites arrived at the desert of Tzin the first mo- in the first month of the year 2487, and the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. And she... Um, She passed away on the 10th of Nisan. Happens to be that's my wife's birthday. So every year um, we celebrate her birthday. We also also mention Miriam. So Miriam is a an important uh, figure in our household. So let's dedicate today to talking about Miriam. The first thing that we mentioned already is that once she passed away, suddenly there's no water. So from that, the sages learn that the water that they had when they were in the wilderness was thanks to Miriam. Now it doesn't say this in uh, the verse itself that Miriam uh, passed away, uh, when Miriam passes away in, in, in 21, in chapter 20, verse 1. However, the well is hinted at And how is it hinted at? If you take the third letter in the verse, it's a bet. The middle letter of the verse is an aleph. And the third to last letter is a resh. And those three letters together spell be'er. Be'er is a well. And that is the song of the well that we will read about later in our parsha. In chapter 21, verse 17, this will be the sixth reading. The reason I'm bringing this up is because there's an unbelievable, beautiful numerical illusion between the Song of the Well, which is again in chapter 21, verse 17 through 20. And this was the Song of the Well that they sang apparently every time that they used the water from the well. It was just now that since it had reappeared after Moses brought it back that we hear about this song. This is one of only three songs documented in the Pentateuch. So, we have here a question. What is the connection between the song of the well and Miriam? And if you do the calculation, it's not very hard to do you'll figure out that Miriam passed away when she was 127 years old. We already know that number. That's the age at which Sarah passed away, the first matriarch. And everything that the sages have to say about this number, 127, she was without sin like a 7-year-old, uh, uh, beautiful as a 20-year-old, and wise as a 100-year-old. and. Miriam was the same. Miriam, in a certain sense, is, is a new matriarch. But unlike Sarah, who we don't see interacting with other women, or not really in a favorable way, Miriam is the epitome of the matriarch of all women. And we'll talk about this in a moment. But again, she passed away when she was 127. How do we get to that? It's very easy. Because... When Moses and and Aaron came out of Egypt, they were 80 and 83 years old, and we know that Miriam was seven years older than Moses. 
So she was 87 when they came out of uh, Egypt. And she was 120, Moses was 120 in this year, and she was 127 in the same year when they passed away. All three of them passed away in the same year. So Moses was 120, Aaron was 123, and she was 127. We mention this because if you count the letters in the Song of the Well, again, Numbers 21, verses 17 through 20, you'll find that there are exactly 127 letters in the Song of the Well. A beautiful connection between Miriam, who brought the well to the people all the time that they were in the wilderness, and Miriam's age when she passed away. And when this song, basically is the first time we're told about it, in her 127th year. But Miriam's story is long and varied. If you remember, we meet her before we meet Moses. Because she is one of the two midwives. She and her mother Yocheved, together, were the midwives in Egypt. And... Miriam was the one who stood watch over Moses when he was placed in the basket and put on the Nile. Now what is that all about? So first of all, to understand Miriam and her role in Moses' life, in the life of all women, we have to ask about her name. What does this name mean, Miriam? Miriam literally means, the simplest explanation is that Miriam means bitterness. Why was she named Bitter? What kind of a name is that for someone? The sages say because in the year that she was born, that was the year that the true pain and suffering of the Egyptian exile began. So really there were 86 years of very difficult judgment on the Jewish, on the, on the Israelites. And those were the last 86 years until Moses came and delivered them from Egypt. So she was, this is the first explanation of her name, is that she is the one who the bitterness started with. And so her parents, Moses' parents also, Amram and Yocheved, named her bitterness, Miriam. But, as is many times the case, even if a person has a name or even a countenance or a, a character that lends it to, itself to something negative, it's because they are the ones to rectify this negativity. And that's exactly what Miriam did. So Miriam, first of all, what it really means is she's like a nurse. She was a midwife. And her role is not to be bitter, but rather to identify with the bitterness that people feel. That is a real purpose in life. That she is not only sympathetic and empathetic to what people feel, but the name Miriam also means to lift up, to raise someone, to elevate them. She was able to take people and to elevate them despite the difficulties and bitterness they had in life. Case in point, perhaps the most important thing she ever did, was that when the decree came out in Egypt that Pharaoh had decreed that all the males should be killed by throwing them into the Nile and drowning them, her father, who was the leader of the generation, Amram, he divorced his wife, Yocheved. And why did he do this? Because he said... I don't want to give birth to children that will definitely be murdered. So by this time, Aaron had already been born. He was three years old. And when people saw that Amram had left his wife, they did the same. Because he was the leader of the generation. Miriam came to him and said, first of all, It's a decree from Pharaoh. You can also make a decree. You're a tzaddik, you're a pious person. Who says that it's Pharaoh's decree that will will be followed? If you make a decree, 
that all the children not be thrown into the Nile, it could be that people will be afraid of you and they won't do it. Moreover, certainly God listens to you more than he listens to Pharaoh. That was her first argument. She made another argument. She said to her father, who says that you can divorce your wife? It's true that you have a 50% chance of having boys, but you also have a 50% chance of having girls. How can you decree worse than Pharaoh? Your decree is worse than Pharaoh's decree. Pharaoh decreed only to kill the boys. You're decreeing to kill the girls also. And this is very interesting. She, she's an advocate for women. Her father didn't, apparently didn't think of this option. It had to be Miriam, who was seven years old at the time, to make that argument and to make him listen to her. But perhaps the most important thing she did when she was seven years old is she came to Amram, her father, and she prophesied. She prophesied and said, It's my mother who is going to give birth to the Savior of the Israelites. And that's exactly what happened. She gave birth to Moses. And if Amram had stuck to his decision to leave his wife, Moses would not have been born. So after all the arguments, she also was a prophetess. And she's a prophet. The first time we actually hear her name is at the Song of the Sea. And there it says, Miriam the prophetess. That's the first time we actually hear her name. Before, then, before that, we have her, maid, uh, her midwife name, Pua. We don't hear about Miriam yet. But once we hear about Miriam, right away, the, the word prophetess, the adjective prophetess, is attached to her. Why? Because of this prophecy that she gave. Now, this is exactly what it means to uplift people. Miriam was able to take the suffering. She understood the suffering better than anyone else. She had grown up on it. But she took the suffering and even the defeatist attitude of her father and she transformed it into a prophecy of redemption. That is the role that Miriam played. And that is captured in the whole idea of the well that she brings with her into the wilderness and that waters the people throughout their 40 years in the wilderness because the whole notion of a well is that these are the cleanest, purest waters. They can even be waters that come from the ocean, but once they pass through the ground, they're cleaned. It's the bitterness that's taken out of them. Miriam is the epitome of being able to take something and cleanse it and uplift it and turn it into something positive. There's so much more that we could say about Miriam, but we're out of time. And so with this we'll end today. And she is definitely the heroine of the Parsha of Chukat. Everything leads up. The, the first uh, reading was the reading of the red heifer and the sages say why is Miriam's death uh, adjacent to the red heifer because just as the red heifer is able to uh, ritually purify us from the defilement of death so does the death the passing, passing of a tzaddik a ta a, the passing of a righteous person but Miriam was greater than that because in her life she was able to cleanse people of the defilement of death, of depression, of being defeated. She was a person who was able to lift us up more than anyone else. And at the Song of the Sea, she takes all the women with her in dance and song. And thanks to this, the sages say that it was in the merit of righteous women, specifically of Miriam, specifically Miriam because of her argument with her father and her prophecy that her mother would give birth to the Savior, that we were taken out of Egypt. And that is the role of women in every generation. It's to be able to be like Miriam, to take their inspiration from Miriam, and to be able to turn what seems to be a negative situation into something positive and uplifting. 
Thanks for joining today. I hope to see you again tomorrow.